Number 18, suppose you have a wind speed gauge like the pitot tube shown in example 12.2. By what factor must wind speed increase to double the value of height in the manometer? Uh, this is, is this independent of fluid? Okay. Um, so here we have, uh, I drew two pictures. All right, here's one picture. Here's another picture. All right, this will be a simplification of the picture over here. So the wind is flowing in from here, right? Has a certain velocity and it's going to be acting then, you know, on the uh, water. So why don't we assume, uh, let's take this first case for example. So we got a certain velocity of wind flowing in. And we realize that the heights here are going to be the same. All right, the displacement of the air over here is the same as the displacement of the water. They're both at the same level. So now uh, what I can do is basically using Bernoulli's equation, I'm going to start writing things down that I know. Now, since uh, I'm assuming that there is an equilibrium that is reached here, uh, the pressure that is being imparted down here on the water will be equal to the pressure basically being pushed up on the water on the uh, other side. And basically, right, this is my second case, this is my first case, and what that means is that the pressures will be equal. So P1 and P2 are equal. So if they are equal, I can just cancel them on out. Now, let's take a look at the uh, next term. This is one half times the density multiplied by V1 squared. All right. So uh, this, by the way, in the V1 here uh, is talking about the velocity of air, and therefore we have to be talking about the density of air. So that will not cancel. Okay. So let's say we have one half times the density of the air multiplied by uh, V1 squared. Okay. That then plus now the density times of the air times gravity times the height. All right, so I'm just going to leave this as h. This is some h level, okay? So uh, what we have now here is this is going to be the density of air multiplied by gravity multiplied by h. And that should then equal now, how about now this term, the one-half density multiplied by v2 squared? Well, since this tube is closed off, there really is no velocity uh, of the fluid flow on this side, and therefore this whole term will just cancel. All right, so that term goes bye-bye. And now, how about the last? Well, there is a certain height associated with this water, right? I mean, it's the same as that height, so the H's are equivalent here. So this is the density of the water multiplied by gravity multiplied by H. So now what I can do is I'm going to solve this um, because they're asking for what factor must the wind speed increase? And remember, the wind speed here is V1. So I'm going to solve this thing for V1. So subtract this term on over to the right-hand side. So what we get then is 1 half... Uh, density of the air multiplied by the wind speed squared will equal then, if you notice these both have the G and H in common, therefore I can pull that out, G, H, then it would be multiplied by density of the air minus, no, excuse me, density of the water minus density of the air. Okay, just combine those two terms when I subtract it on over, pulled out a common factor. Now I have to get rid of the one half and density of air, so multiply this side by two. You got to do the same thing for this side and then divide out your density of air from both sides as well. Okay, so we should now arrive at this. V1 squared is going to be equal to 2GH times density of water minus density of air, all then divided by density of air. And now I have to find just V1, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. All right, if I take the square root of this, I can get rid of the square. Oops. I can get rid of the square. And then I would also take the square root of that side, right? And I could also get rid of the square root sign then. Okay, so here is the velocity of my first case. All right, I'll call this case A. So let me say here's case A. All right. Now, let's take a look at now case B. So everything's the same. I still got some velocity flowing in. I'm going to call this V1 again. But this V1, just I'm going to label it sub B. I'm only going to input that in the at the final stage of my analysis. Okay. Uh, we also have now a height differential, right, as depicted in the equation, as the picture up there. So here, the heights of these two things are basically the same, though, right? The height that was displaced here for the uh, for the uh, air, this is H, is the same as the height displaced of the water. So those heights are equivalent. Okay. Um, all right. And now what I realize, right, is that this height in relation to the, you know, initial height has been doubled. So I'm going to say that now this height, because I'm trying to relate it to my original H, 
is really 2h, right? So the height here has been doubled, okay? So here's 2h. All right, so now let's do the same analysis. Let's plug everything on in. All right, I'm gonna have the same formula. Nothing has changed. All the other uh, things have remained constant. All right, the idea that there's no velocity in the second part of the tube, blah, blah, blah. So this is now gonna be, let me put it in a different color. This is now gonna be one half times the density of air times the velocity of that incoming air squared, plus now the density of air multiplied by G, multiplied now by 2H because the height has doubled. And that will be equal to now density of the water times G times now 2H again. So I'm gonna combine these two terms. I realize that they're similar, right? So this is one half density of air multiplied by the velocity of the incoming air squared will equal then. Now I have three common factors here, right? I got a two, a G, and an H. A two, a G, and an H. And uh, that will then be multiplied by the density of water minus the density of air. Just combine those two terms, pulled out some common factors, and that's it for that. Then again, I have to do my same uh, part here, right? I gotta multiply this side by two. Right? And then divide, and I got to also multiply this side by two. And then I also have to uh, pull out my, uh, you know, divide out the density of air. Okay, so we're going to have now V1 squared is equal to, now you can combine these twos, but I'm not going to. All right, I'm going to leave them separate for now, just for, uh, to illustrate a point. So now this will be two times two GH density of water minus density of air all over now the all over now the density of air and remember i got to take the square root of this side that means i got to take the square root of that side okay so take the square root of the right when i take the square root of this i can get rid of that square sign so here is now my v1b okay this is now my v1b now notice these two equations there's only one difference in them right do you see the difference right here? Right? That two, that two's there, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to simply just reorganize the square root on the yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna say V1, I gotta leave myself a little space. And actually what I'm going to do is, let me do this. Because I'm going to be dividing, because I wanna find out how many times larger V1B essentially has to be to V1A. I'm basically doing a nice big old division here, all right? So basically I'm gonna take this, divide it now by my slightly reworked equation, okay? All I'm doing is just manipulating the radical. So this is V1B is equal to now, I'm going to write this, square root of two. So basically I'm just taking the square root of this, multiplied then by square root of two G H, density of the water minus density of the air, all divided by density of the air, right? That's all, all I did was a little mathematical manipulation, okay? I just essentially, I just distributed the radical over here, which is allowed, um, to the two, and then I just left this, the rest under the radical, okay? The reason why I did that is because I wanna show you something. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, that is the same as that. So when you find the factor by which the velocity has increased, meaning you're gonna take the velocity in the second case here, divide it by the velocity of the first case, notice the only thing that's left standing, the only thing that's left standing, so V1B over V1A is equal to radical two over one. And that is your answer. It increases by a factor of radical two. All right? Huh. Not as satisfying as I thought, but what are you gonna do? Um, so last is says, is it, is it independent of the moving fluid and the fluid in the manometer? Well, you tell me, right? Does this have anything to do? I mean, we had density of the water and the air. I put that all in, but what happened in the end? They both canceled. So obviously not. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Hope you subscribe and we'll see you next time. Take care.